Good afternoon and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. It is always a blessing to be with you. Today marks the end of our midweek Lenten service. This coming Sunday, we'll celebrate the triumphal entrance of our Lord Jesus Christ to Jerusalem, and we prepare ourselves for his death. And then the week after that, the celebration of his resurrection. So I invite you to come for the Palm Sunday uh, service, 8.30 at the Contemporary and 11 o'clock for the traditional. And as always, you can follow us online um, on the church Facebook, St. John's Family. Next week, we will not have the midweek Latin service, but we will, however, have the Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. at the Education Building, and the Good Friday service will be here at the main sanctuary at 7 p.m. So both services will be held at night, 7 p.m. So let us start our service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Please join me with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Joining with all of our brothers and sisters, both here and in heaven, around the world, let us profess our faith as we use the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious Jesus, our Lord and our God, we remember your death, your suffering, and we already celebrate the gift of the resurrection. Have mercy upon us now. And at the hour of our death, grant us, your servants, with the others who devoutly remember your blessed passion, a holy and peaceful life in this world. And through your grace, 
eternal glory in the life to come, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign God forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the letter to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, we'll read verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Jesus Christ, you are our God. We confess that you are the Lord. Help us to be obedient Help us to follow your commandment, to love one another, to humble ourselves, and follow the way of the cross. Amen. I would like you to picture this scenario. A son of a famous, well-known king who disguised himself and went to a very afar place in a little tiny village, lived among the people as a servant and worked among them. Nobody knew that he was a king. Spent three years and more living among them, worked hard with them, being cussed, being spat at, being hated, because people didn't know who he was. Until one day, his, his father came with white horses surrounded by armies to pick him up. And the village say, who are you here for? And this king said, I'm here for my son. And the son came out of the crowd. And the father said, come over here, my prince. Can you imagine what would those people do? They'll bow down to this prince and say, like, we wish we had known. We wish we had known. You are among the lucky one because you cannot say that I wish I had known. You can say right now that Jesus, I know that you are the king and you live among us. Although I cannot see you, I feel your presence and I believe and I trust in you. The Apostle Paul urges the believers in Philippi, saying that I want you to have the same mind. I want you to have the same mind <coughs> that Christ himself had. Although he was God, he did not. He did not exploit the fact that he is God. Although he was king, he chose to be slave. Although he was rich, he chose to be poor. Although he had everything, he chose to work from his own hands to have the little things that he had for living. He came to build our life. That's it. With humility. He didn't use any of his heavenly privilege. He could, have, he could have just performed miracles and life is good. 
But he lived just like us. Jesus did not fake his humanity. He felt pain. He felt sadness. He felt sorrow. And he felt happiness. He lived just like us. And he accepted. That is the obedience part. That's what makes Jesus very special. Human. The obedience. He obeyed all of his father commandment. And that is to die on the cross. He had the option to stay away from that death. Pilate, the governor Pilate, Pontius Pilate wanted to free him. And he said, don't you know that I have the power to let you go? And Jesus said, the power that you have was given to you by my father. Meaning that I have the power to get away from this. But this is not the reason why I came. I came to die on the cross to free up my people. To give my people salvation. To take my people under the yoke of sin. Jesus obeyed his father. How obedient are you to God? How do you follow his commandment? The little privilege that you have in life, do you use them to exploit others or to serve God? Jesus gives us the lesson of humility. He is teaching us every day to obey God's commandment. He put a commandment for us to follow. The commandment is in John 15, love one another. To love is a commandment. If you don't believe it, just think about the person you don't like in this life. <laughs> and make a challenge to love that person. It's a commandment. You have to make an effort. You might say that love is that feeling that comes spontaneously in your heart. And you see lots of stars and red roses and hearts. Sometimes love is very challenging. It can cost your life. Jesus gave his life for you and for me. Therefore, we should love one another. You ran into any problem, use the name of Jesus. That is the most powerful name in the entire world and in heaven. Call Jesus. He will answer you. Call Jesus. He will live with you. Call Jesus. He will help you follow God's commandment with love, joy, and peace. Amen. Please receive God's blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.